Hello friends, we'll be discussing an illustration which will be related to problem on method 1. That means the interest table method. So, let's understand or figure out how to solve this method or rather how to solve an illustration related to this method. So, when we spoke about interest table, we understood that interest table is something which includes interest to be charged on the transactions or allowed on the transactions. Now, when you have to discuss about this, we'll jot down certain points about interest table as to what are the basic requisites of it and after that, we'll go ahead towards the illustration of it. So, let's go ahead with the one first. Now, the basic requisites have been mentioned here. The transactions are recorded in the form of an account like debit side, credit side. Two additional columns are mentioned on each side of the account like the ledger account. Two additional columns that we are talking about will be due date column both on the debit and credit and the interest column both on the debit and credit side will be mentioned. Working has to be shown to figure out how the due date has been calculated and automatically you will figure out that the transaction is getting resolved or sold out. Now how to do that is supposed to be done or rather can be explained using a problem or an illustration. So let's jot down the illustration now. The question state that we have to prepare an account current for Nath Brothers in respect of the transactions that will be mentioned down here which were done with Sham. So let's jot down the illustration now. Now the illustration has been mentioned here for reference. So let's figure out what exactly has been mentioned. It has a date column, a description column, amount column and a due column as mentioned in the illustration. For 2015 and 16, there are different kind of transactions that have happened between Nath Brothers and Sham. So, those are the descriptions given. Wherever a payment is received or made, there is no due date. However, wherever the purchase or sale transaction happens, there is a due date mentioned. Like on September 16, goods were sold to Sham. 200 the due date is 1st of October like wherever the goods have been sold out or purchase transaction or sale transaction has happened there is a specific due date mentioned for example let's look into the transaction on September 16 goods were sold to Sham amount is 200 and the due date is 1st of October. Simultaneously on 1st of October, we received certain cash from Sham. 490, no due date mentioned there. On 21st of October, goods were purchased from Sham. Worth of piece 500 and the due date was 1st of December 2016. On 1st of November, we paid certain amount to Sham. That is 330 rupees and similarly for 1st of December as well. Now again, in the next month or rather when we came in the month of Jan, there is certain transaction. Again, in the month of December, we have certain transaction here like 5th of December. Goods were purchased from Sham worth rupees 500 due date is 1st of Jan. And on 10th of December there are certain goods again purchased from Sham for 200 for which due date is 1st of Jan. Now in the year 2016 on 1st of Jan there has been certain transactions done. We paid to Sham rupees 600. And on 9th of Jan, goods were sold to Sham. 20 rupees and the due date is 1st of Feb. So these are the details or these are the kind of details you will find in an illustration. There are few more additions to this.
We have to calculate interest at the rate of 6% per annum. One year is equal to 365 days as an additional information. And you have to prepare the current account until or up till 1st of Feb. Now that we know everything, let's go ahead towards the working part. That means calculation of due date. Now the working note has calculation of due days first. So what we have done is that the first transaction until the last month. So in this illustration, we have transactions starting from October. So October has been taken into consideration and we have to prepare the account current until the month of Feb. So every month or rather each and every month has been mentioned including the October and Feb months. So October, November, December, Jan, Feb. These five months are included in here because Feb is the last month and October is where from the first transaction is starting. So the other two columns that has been mentioned here is the transaction date and the due date. Now let's figure out how to solve this. So while calculating the total days, what you have to understand is from the due date, wherever the due date has been mentioned, you have to take into consideration all the transactions. But where the due date has been mentioned, from that date until the date where the account is supposed to be rendered that means in this question it will be 1st of Feb because we have to prepare the account current only until 1st of Feb. So from due date any specific due date that has been mentioned until that date how many days are there is what you have to take into consideration to calculate the total number of days whereby the due date is not mentioned the date of the transaction itself is the due date itself. So that is what you have to assume or consider. I hope this is very clear for your understanding because this is the base of going through this calculation. So the due date whichever has been mentioned from that until the closure of the date or rather we can say closure of the accounts for this question which will be 1st of Feb or if the due date is not mentioned that the date of the transaction until closure of this account. This is what you have to calculate. So let's go ahead with the first transaction. So the first transaction as mentioned in the question is for 16th of September and the due date for that same transaction is 1st of October. So if to calculate the total number of days for this specific transaction, it will be from October from the due date until 1st of Feb, how many days is what you have to calculate. So for October, the whole month will be included because 1st of October is the due date. Same for November. Same is for December, Jan and Feb. But in Feb, the account is closed on 1st, so it will be just one day that will be calculated. But until December and Jan, you'll calculate the whole days. So if you make a total of all these numbers or numericals, you'll find the total number of days on the right hand side. So this is how you calculate the total number of days for this specific transaction. Now let's go on to the next one. The next transaction was on 1st of October where cash was received. As there was no due date, so the due date will be October 1st itself. Again, you have to use the same logic. The next transaction was on October 21st. The due date has been mentioned as 1st of December. So for this transaction, October and November is of no concern for us. It is right from December itself. So when you exclude the due date itself, whatever is left in that, because we did the same thing in October. We have 31st October, so the due date is 1st of October, you remove that due date and whatever pending days are there, you take that, so that has been taken into consideration. Same goes for December, if 1st of December is the due date, you remove that date out of 31 days and whatever is the balance is, you take that thing. So that's what has been done. Now let's go to the next one. That's for the November 1 transaction. Let's go on to the next one.
So we've done with the calculation of total number of days. This is where we stop the working note and then we go ahead with the preparation of the main subject matter. So let's go ahead and prepare that part. The first thing you have to do while preparing this format is you have to divide the page into two parts equally because there will be a lot of columns that will be coming in. So we'll start off with 2015 first and then we'll end up to 2016. So the transaction that was first mentioned will be a part of it. So the first transaction was goods being sold to Sham. So when this transaction happens, so what do you understand? The entry will be Sham account debit to sales account. So Sham is an account current with Nath Brothers. So this is how it will be. So in Sham's account, it will be debited as two sales. So two sales will be mentioned on the debit side here. You have to use the entries to pass this transaction. The due date has to be mentioned there. The amount has to be mentioned there and the number of days also has to be mentioned. Now how to calculate the interest here is one interesting part. If you remember we calculated this due days, total number of days and 365 days in a year. So what you have to do is that you have to multiply 200 the amount multiplied by the total number of days divided by 365 multiplied by the rate of interest. So what you exactly have to do is this. You have to take 200 on a calculator multiplied by the total number of days that is 123 divide the sum or divide the product by 365 days. You will be getting an answer whatever answer you get you take the percentage of it that means if the interest is six percent then six percent of that answer you will get an interest of 4.04 .04. so that is the exact interest that is being charged on this i hope this is clear this is how you make the transaction now let's go on to the next one cash received from sham so in this case debit what comes in bank account debit to sham account so on the credit side of this side will mention by bank account or by cash account is the same formula that we have used and we have mentioned it here so i hope this video or rather this thing gives you a clarity about how to go ahead with the mentioning of this part i'll do few more illustrations like this or rather few more entries and then we can go ahead and pass out all the entries one by one so we've completed with the October 1 transaction where the cash was received for rupees 90. Let's go on to the next transaction. The next transaction refers to October 21 goods purchased from Sham. Now when purchase happens, this is an expense for you. So purchase account debit to Sham account. So Sham account credit side will be mentioned to purchases or buy purchases. So when all these things are mentioned, 500 has been mentioned, the corresponding total days also has been mentioned, you have to calculate the interest on it. So 500 multiplied by 62 divided by 365 multiplied by 6% on it. 5.095, that means if you round it off, it will be 5.1. So I hope this video or rather this thing is giving you clarity about how to go ahead with this thing. Now we'll go ahead and post all the transactions and then we'll mark the closure of the sum. Now that we have figured out all the totals, let's go ahead and figure out the complete tally of it. So amount column and interest column will be tallied here and figure out which balance is there and accordingly we'll carry forward that balance. So you have to first tally the interest column to understand the difference between debit side and credit side and that balance has to be moved to the amount column then. So in this debit side of interest is more as compared to the credit side of interest hence the balance 4.97 is there that will be carried forward to the amount column then. Now we'll tally the amount column of both the sides. So the balance for amount is 194.97. So this gives you a total of the first illustration that you have solved against interest method. So this is how you go ahead and solve this calculation. So I hope this video gave you a clarification about how to go ahead with the interest calculation when it comes to account current. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikeda and keep subscribing to Ikeda.